Happy 4th of July and welcome to our 14th episode of the DMV Autocross Podcast. I'm Danny Kao. And I'm Atta Tabesh. Thank you for joining us on episode number 13. This podcast is not going to be like the movie Friday the 13th, right, Danny? The only thing that's scary is our own Dustin Grubbs won the Super Challenge <laughs> at the SCCA Cleveland Pro Solo on his first pro solo ever. Ooh. I don't know, man. I don't know anything scarier than that. Right. <laughs> oh my God. I think most of us should just quit autocrossing now because there's no hope for the rest of us. It, it's over. Just don't bother to try. Danny, first, first autocross, pro. first super challenge, really? <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, Couldn't have been man. a better guy, though. Dustin's oh, yeah. on fire. Love him. <laughs> no, that was awesome. My goodness. You know what you could do? You could listen to our show about how to be a fun autocrosser, not a fast autocrosser right huh? that, that's huh? true yeah no that's definitely true let's see how much fun we can have for the next two weeks all right yeah this saturday is the third event for the pca chesapeake autocross at Bowie. mark hubley will be designing a fun and flowing course like always and many of the regulars should be there chick-fil-a and rips are next door so good food always comes after the race it's in the middle of the summer now so make sure you stay hydrated and protect yourself from the sun this is the only local event this week. If you don't mind driving up to two hours, Susquehanna SCCA is hosting their events number five and six at the Farm Show. Registration ends Thursday night at 8 p.m., so there is still time to sign up. On Sunday, you can join me and our dermatologist, Alan Claffey, at the Virginia Motorsports Club event at Virginia Motorsports Park by Petersburg. Registration is still open until Saturday at 10 p.m. So if you're in town and want to autocross, please come and join us in Petersburg, and we'll go to Giuseppe's for Italian food after the race. The 4th of July holiday weekend is also the big SCCA Pro Solo and Tour events in Bristol, Virginia. Lots of local SCCA autocrossers will be there. The questions are, will Dustin Grubbs go two for two and win the Super Challenge again on his second try? Will our dermatologist... Alan Claffey, hold on to his first day lead for the second day. And will Brian Carwin finally show up at a national event instead of babysitting his dog, Garrett? We will find out shortly. That's right. The suspense is killing us. <laughs> well, but you'll find out in a few days. Yep. The following weekend, Brandywine Motor Club is hosting their third event at Ripken Stadium. Not sure who's building the course, but my guess is Ken Roller maybe building something fun and challenging again, and maybe a little longer this time. I can almost predict the top five raw time will be, it probably would be Shu, Williman, Gaffney, Greg Poe, and Mohit again. Hmm. But everybody, please prove me wrong. Yeah, yeah. Let's prove Danny wrong. Big yeah. wrong. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Those guys are chumps. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but yeah. 15th and 14th are also the WDCR SCCA's Level 1 and Level 2 schools at the Potomac Pad at Summit Point. There are still a few spots left for both schools at time of recording. Your new Super Challenge winner, Dustin, will be instructing if you want to learn how to be fast. And both Uncle Danny and Weatherman Allen will be helping out at Level 1 School if you want to learn how to have fun or how to do bad podcasts. <laughs> this is the last school of the year, so please don't miss it. Big deal. Oh, well, I was reminded two weeks ago the importance of knowing the weather forecast and properly protect yourself as I almost fainted at the BMW event due to sunstroke. This is why we paid the big bucks for our hosts for our next segment. Let's welcome to our own dermatologist, Alan Claffey. He, he is a meteorologist. <laughs> I call him Mr. Neutrogena. Oh my God. <laughs> Low shit. Hey, Danny. Hey, Anna. It's Alan at the Weather Terrace in beautiful downtown Waldorf, Maryland. We're going to take a little walk back to the backyard where things are a little quieter in the wooded shade paradise that is downtown Waldorf, Maryland. We can't do a lot of small talk when it comes to the weather today because there is a ton going on. I have a lot of stuff on my cheat sheet here. Cheat sheet. See here? Got yesterday's wordle on it too. So hey, all kinds of information available to you. So we're going to wander around aimlessly in the backyard while you get all dizzy while I do this. And we're going to start Saturday, July 6th, PCA, Chesapeake, running at Bowie, 91 degrees, sun, then clouds, and 
what the weather service is calling a possibility of a drenching thunderstorm that sounds like fun to me sunday july 7th it's not really dmv if you listen to danny and anna but it kind of counts for me because i'm going it's vmsc running at virginia motorsports park down south of richmond 89 and humid and again the possibility of a thunderstorm you're going to be hearing that a lot in the coming weeks because that's just what happens around here in the middle of summer learn to live with it uh if you're curious about the summer nationals going on in bristol tennessee well it's it's a pretty bunch of broken record for all those it's uh clouds and sun and thunderstorm possibility on every day and it's going to be humid if you've been to bristol you know it's going to be humid it's temperatures running around the mid to high 80 so it could be a lot worse but also you have to keep an eye out for those thunderstorms and those always welcome thunderstorm delays and national tours with wait lists and full entries those are long days ask me how i know so uh let's move on the following weekend it's still going to be kind of busy we have a july 13th on saturday brandywine motorsports club running in ripkin stadium 87 and sunny i don't see anything in this forecast about thunderstorms so whether that means it actually isn't going to happen or not who knows? Also on the 13th, WDCR will be hosting a level one autocross school at the Summit Point. That's the Potomac Pad, I believe. I will be there. I'm an instructor. They let me mind young minds. Right? Meld young minds. Train young minds. If I was smart, I'd stop this and do it over again. But I'm, I'm on a roll, so I'm going to keep going. 88 degrees, sun, and humid. Surprise, humidity in the middle of summer in the dc area sunday the level two schools happening also at the potomac pad 88 degrees sunny and humid it says here morning showers afternoon thunderstorms it's a little bit of everything there so i've gone on long enough i'm going to send this back to the studio with danny and ada and hopefully a lot of loud traffic in my backyard sorry danny you're your you, you little your little computer programs to get that out of there people won't know what i'm talking about so on that happy note back to the studio see you guys thank you alan the only local autocross last two weeks was the ncc bmw cca event at the washington circuit at summit point the temperature was in a high 90s and it felt like 107. i personally felt like it was 140 degrees and ultimately collapsed at the rowway inn at charlestown for several hours mm. Before you start joking about me getting a motel room paid by the hour, I can promise you that it was no fun in that. Sunstroke and dehydration are not good things, especially bad for old farts like me. So please be careful out there during the hot summer months. Stay hydrated, look for shade as much as possible. The fastest time of the day went to Marcus Pine. Marcus was so fast, he didn't even stay for the afternoon session, which was super smart. The top 10 of the competition portion of the event are as follows. Marcus Pine, Danny Kao, Cody Hunt, Patrick Gaffney, Dean Mohit, Carwin, Vinny Lee, Christopher Moody, Greg Pollock, and Ken. How, how do I say Ken's name? Wojak. Wojak. Ken Wojak. All right. Thank you. Afternoon results are Cody Hunt, Patrick Gaffney, Brian Carwin, Ken Wojak, Tyler Regino, Joel Vergen, Peter Grasso, Al Pacheco, Samuel Potina, and Brian Shipman. Our last episode featured an awesome on-site report by our buddy Greg Pope. And that was by far the most popular segment. Yeah. And many have asked for more of Greg. Everyone's so asking. By popular demand, we're super happy to have Greg to give us a special on-site report for the Cleveland Pro Solo. DCR SCCA Autocrossers brought home eight class trophies, and the big giant super challenge winner trophy. Enjoy. On June 29th and 30th, the SCCA and the Northwestern Ohio region hosted a pro solo in Cleveland, Ohio. The WDCR region was not only well represented, but represented well, bringing home multiple trophies, finishing high in pass times, and ultimately winning the super challenge. The event started off like any other pro solo with practice starts, and course walking. 
In the evening, the NWOR region hosted a welcome party at a local go-karting track. At the end, they had a race between all the fastest drivers of the day. Julian Garfield finished fifth, and Marcus Pine finished sixth. The next morning, there were puddles and lots of dark rain clouds. The first few groups got some damp runs in before the storm hit. Unfortunately, midday, there was a massive rain and thunderstorm, which caused over an hour delay. By the time STR got their first set of runs, it was already 2.30 in the afternoon. The course was very wet from the storm, with lots of puddles and lots of uncertain grip. The second set of runs for the drivers was much drier, and many Miata baby burnouts were had. Unfortunately, we didn't finish up the day until around 7 p.m. This was definitely one of the longest start-to-finish autocross days I can remember. At the end of day one, Dustin Grubbs was in first place in overall packs, and Alan Claffey was in third place in STR. <laughs> Some good driving, Alan. Good driving. By Sunday morning, the course was dry and the air was crisp. Everybody was dropping time and class positions were changing rapidly. So how did it all shake out? Patrick Gaffney ended up second in Super Street. In C Street, Jack Chrissy takes the win out of 22 drivers. Other locals in the class include Julian Garfield and Sam Vassallo driving the only non-ND in the class in his Porsche Boxer 550. Sam Strano took second in F Street. Also in F Street, eighth place was Lee Picone, Bill driving Lee's Mustang, and Steve Salisbury in a Camaro SS1 LE. Man, Sam can really dance that car around the course, can he? STR was also heavily represented by the region. Marcus Pine took home the third place trophy. Trevor Blackwell was in fourth place. Greg Pollock, six. Alan Claffey in eighth position and Steve Mitchell finished in 12th. John V placed second place in his RX-8 in S1. Justin Grubbs took the win in S5 in his Civic SI, winning the class by a whopping 2.1 seconds. Wow, Dustin, that was crazy fast. In L3, Jen Fox took home the third place trophy and made it into the challenge. Look at those handsome DC boys representing. Mm -hmm. As far as PAX goes, Sam Strano finished second in PAX, Dustin Grubbs was fourth in PAX, Marcus Pine was 10th, and Jack Chrissy finished 12th. After open competition are the challenges. First up in the ladies challenge was Jen Fox versus Shelly Montford. Shelly went on to win the first round, and ultimately went on to win the ladies challenge champion. There's a new format for the Super Challenge this year, with three rounds of knockouts. You basically run a full heat of four, two runs on each side, and the top eight move on. From K1, Sam Strano finished fifth, and Dustin Grubbs was sixth. Marcus Pine and Jack Chrissy, 11th and 13th, got knocked out. In K3, Dustin Grubbs was second overall, and Dustin went on to the Super Challenge, where he battled bracket through bracket all the way to the final challenge, winning the entire event. Congratulations to all the drivers, but huge congratulations to Dustin Grubbs. Not only was this his first pro solo, he took the win in his class, he was fourth overall in PAX, and he won the Super Challenge. What a way to start. This has been your roving reporter, Greg Pollock. Time to dry off all the gear and pack up for Bristol. Thank you, Greg, so much again, and this concludes the events report for the week. Oh, before we sign off, I got to... Oh, yeah. I got I got to do a, uh, a a super showdown against Dustin Grubb. Absolutely, because because I was the last previous or whenever super challenge winner. Can you can you explain to our listeners what's on that hat that you're wearing right now? Maybe the it one says that I, I was the 2008 super challenge winner at the New Jersey Pro Solo or something like that. Yeah, so Danny's wearing yeah. a hat. It's a gorgeous hat. It's got the whole like beautiful white stitching on a blue hat. The whole nine, great hat. And it literally says he's a super challenge winner. Yeah. So, so finally, me and Dustin are sharing our own super secret about how to win super challenges that we haven't shared to anybody else yet. But I will share that with you now. It's uh, any blind mice can find us. Yeah, find a nut sometimes. That's <laughs> or even, okay. Or, or even a blind squirrel can find a nut sometimes. 
I'm calling timeout on that. That's how, maybe how you won the super challenge, okay? Uh-huh. Dustin, on the other hand, <laughs> is a machine. That's true. He's a, he's a young machine, but he's just a young squirrel. He's a young Danny. <laughs> anyway, congratulations, Dustin. Winning super challenges oh, is awesome. It. it has a lot of luck. <laughs> it really does. Oh my god! Oh wait that. a minute! Wait a minute! L- Logan, Logan won super challenge. That's yeah. Logan won super challenge. Yeah. So Logan won. Dustin won. You're not even in the last two that won. That's right. That's right. So Logan, you know, uh, Logan oh, won super right. challenge. So 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 now you can call me Dustin and Logan three blind mice. And dus- <laughs> and Logan won it in MetLife, right? Yeah, I, th- I think you won it in New Jersey. Oh, yeah, that's, that's huge. Right. Oh, that's huge. That's <laughs> huge. Oh, my God. Three blind mice. So, uh, what, what this means, though, so the both East Coast pro solos, you know, in this area were won by WDCR members. Which oh, that's is, massive. Which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Let's see, all right. Okay, Logan so, in a showdown for the one in Virginia. That's right. One of these days, we'll all show off with our hats for no reason. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. Okay, let's move on to the next segment. We're back again with Daniel for our third segment of video data recording and rendering. In our past two features episode, Daniel went over recording devices and apps that we wanna use and how we build our own videos with all that cool stuff. And then so in this episode, Daniel will showed us how to build our own gauges for your car and display data on your race video. Oh my God, I thank you again for joining us, Daniel. I'm, I can't wait for this one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thank you for joining us. It hasn't been 30 seconds from the last time we we talked. (laughs) This has been multiple weeks. Indeed. (laughs) So I'm sure this is going to get technical. So between Danny and myself, one of us is going to be listening very intently and the other one will sleep. This is, you are really smart and it is hard to keep up. (laughs) Nevertheless, this is a super interesting topic, possibly our most interesting topic, actually, Danny. What do you think? Well, I mean, the last episode was a, was a free gift of thousands of dollars of knowledge. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't know. It, I, it was years. hard to be that one, yeah. man. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. But I don't I mean, want my gauges. Exactly it, no, feels like. <laughs> it feels like we're getting a gift from Daniel. All right, let's get to, let's make gauges. Let's just go to make gauges. <laughs> yeah. So, so a lot of this is going to come from some of the documentation that's actually out on Race Render itself. So this they've got kind of a step-by-step guide on on how to create your own realistic gauges, which basically boils down to take a picture of your gauge and then go adjust it so it, it kind of looks looks okay. But we can go a little little step better. So I had asked Danny to go take a picture of the uh, his ND Miata's tachometer and all that. So he was able to go take that picture right here. So I was able to take this in just a paint editor, rotate it a little bit, and basically grab this piece here. So I've got a little bit of green screen around it that will make that kind of disappear. We're going to grab this this section in here and then create the gauge on top of that. So you'll notice in here, I feel like the gauges that I've got here, I've got kind of the background that kind of shows my uh, the, the, the tachometer here, and it's got its own little needle that kind of moves up and down with it. Uh, so if I come in here, I want to add a tachometer, and you can kind of really pick anything in here. It's not going to make a huge difference which one you pick. This one actually, the C6 template here, does seem to match pretty well with what Danny had there. So we're going to go ahead and start with that. So in here, the most important part is to edit that background and import that piece that we just saved. Where did I save that? That folder. So we're going to import this guy right here. So which format did you so pick, like PNG or something? or, or Just JPEG. a JPEG. JPEG, okay. The PNG seemed to not work as well, so JPEG is the way to go. <laughs> uh, there's a little bit of green around here, so you know it's not going to be you know, a, a thousand percent awesome. It's just going to be kind of mostly awesome, hopefully. But this, this will give us at least a, a nice background to put things on top of here. So then once we have that, we want to take off some of the stuff that they've got here. So take off the face there. We want to take off some of the labels. And then I think we're going to come into the actual gauge designer itself. So this, once you click into here, you've got a whole bunch of different options. Uh, so you've got your various different colors. You've got uh, gradient if you want to uh, make it 
shift from one color to another. Uh, you can kind of shift things around the face. But you've got so many different options here that you can kind of go where you want to with this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and change the needle color to white like it is on, on Danny's here. So we're going to come in here. We're going to make the second one maybe a slightly darker. So we'll go with that so it looks a little, little nicer. We do need to... It's, it's pretty close there. So I think we're going to be okay with that. Let's see. The, the, the next thing we want to look at is the, the general layout here. I think once we get to this point, then we can start seeing exactly what's going on here. So you've got a different, couple of different options here. So if you want to show a peak of where my max was for that particular sweep through the, the, the range, if I want to have a little pointer up at the top instead of, instead of the, the actual needle itself, you can do that. And then you've also got some options for where the actual uh, needle is. So you can change how, how big it is at the end here. So if you want to increase it from the tail, you can do that. Or if you want the tip to not go quite so far, you can do that. So we're going to bring this in with the tip so that it comes and actually comes pretty close to what we have on the, the, the actual picture here. Next thing we want to do is start looking at, all right, how far along do we want this to go? So we want the seven to line up pretty nicely here. We also want the zero to line up with the zero on Danny's gauge here. So we should do the rotate first and then sweep your route. Nice. So then, so then we've got things that are actually looking pretty close here. It's not exact, but it's pretty darn close. We're going to go ahead and leave the trim on because there is a little bit of uh, trim around here, and that kind of covers up the green parts there that we had before too. But this is still this is still super busy, so we gotta gotta take a look at this here. Let's see. So if we take off the dashes, all of a sudden we only have the small ones, small dashes. So we're looking at the intervals down here now. So I can take those off, and all of a sudden we're starting to look like a real gauge. And then I take off the numbers here. All of a sudden, yeah, there we go. That's that's wow. starting to look like a real gauge right now. Wow. Mm. So I'm going to bring this in a little bit. Say go, and all that's of a sudden, fun. look at that. You got a gauge here. Look so at that. My car doesn't quite go up to eight thousand, but you can kind of see it's moving along. Not with that attitude, just like it does, Daniel. <laughs> We did that. Hey, you haven't even hit uh, the shift lights. Five yet. minutes. Come on. Sorry about <laughs> <the> technical. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might blow my engine in, in my car, so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that part for now. But so, so Daniel, first of all, this, this is freaking awesome, right? Like this is just awesome. <laughs> but I do have a question. Why did you accept that photo from Danny that had every single light? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> every light I've ever seen. There was a check engine light. There was there how many lights engine. did he give you? Or four there, you know, you got your check engine, you got your uh, that is unbelievable. TPMS, you got your yeah. hey, parking I, brake hey. is on, you got <laughs> I thought Danny was gonna Danny was gonna simulate that the real battle condition with every light that comes on. Every light. I mean Danny, you you know, he's taking his time and showing us this awesome gate. He asked you for a picture, you send him that? <laughs> It was, it was like done, a Christmas uh, right, thirty minutes before this, so uh, yeah. you, know, you do what you can. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. not like if if Daniel asks you to show him, like you know, whatever your your card ECU is showing, it's probably showing like thirty five errors. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's not no errors. It's stock. Oh, it's My car stock. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> completely stock. Look at this gauge, though. It's oh my goodness! Can't get over it. That is awesome. It is so awesome. Yeah. Oh man. So, uh, right. so I'm I'm assuming that once you save that gate, once you create that gauge, it's it's automatically saved in, in one of your temp, your uh, gauge selections. I, not yet. That is a good point. So yeah. right now, this is still kind of custom to whatever is happening on this project right now. Right. So if you want to save this, you want to use this somewhere else, you know, click this export button right here, hmm. and then name that something, and you'll notice this is the same folder that we saved uh, some of those Race Render 3 templates and styles before. Mm -hmm. uh, so you click Save here, 
all of a sudden I can change this to something else. I can change this over to something here. I can say, no, I want to go back. Oh, it's right there. There it is. Boom. Mm. Wow. So, so tell me, why isn't somebody going to a business of creating race vendor gauges for all the cars so that you can just buy and pay like five bucks or ten bucks to buy each gauge? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I, I think uh, there's, uh, there's some money-making opportunities here that have not yet been realized, but uh, could okay. be realized in, in the future. <laughs> okay, so once again, Daniel has given you a whole bunch of free money. <laughs> it's like, it's like, the, no, the money's like raining now from the sky. He's making it rain. <laughs> this is amazing. He just made a gauge in like five minutes, Danny, yeah. an ND gauge. Yeah. That's crazy. The one with the one with all the Christmas lights. No, no, it's kidding. <laughs> no, understand. I understand how it works now. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, Great this, tutorial. This gauge designer here, this is the one that's got a whole bunch of different options. It's got a massive amount of uh, customization here. So you, if you wanted to uh, put your own uh, labels and stuff like that, you could do that. You can, you can make most of this through uh, what they give you. Uh, but having that picture in the background just makes it, you know, takes it to that next, that's next level there. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah, it sure does. All right. So, you know, we only took 11 minutes to cover this, right? So is there anything that, that you think that we should cover from, uh, from the uh, race renders perspective on, on something cool that, that we can add different things to and so forth? Yeah, I think uh, some of the other things that a lot of people don't know about are uh, are the templates. So once you have things set up, you've got things looking nice in, in your specific project, you can take this and say, actually, I want to reuse this again. So that, that F122 template that we talked about earlier, that was done by exporting the layout as a template under here under file. So I can come in here. I've got a ton of different <laughs> display objects here to make everything work in, in my particular project. But we added Danny's tachometer here. Uh, so if I wanted to save that, I could do that. You just click Create. You go through, click the things that you want to want to save, uh, create the template, and it'll go and save that. So the next time you open Race Render, it shows up. So if you wow. save it with the project dash, then it shows up. Oh, wow, and wow, wow. wow. Hey, hey that, sounds like, that sounds like my programming style back in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, you read the first four characters. If it says DK, K, dash, <laughs> those are the ones you show up. That, that is one thing that I, as a, a, a software engineer in 2024, I've had to go relearn how to make race render work for a lot of this custom stuff. Because uh, I'm used to, all right, I want to do, if this works, then go, or if this is true, then go do this. And oh. otherwise, I want to do this other thing. And then I've got this this array of laps, and I just want to loop through everything and, and pick out each thing, and I'm good to go. Race Render doesn't have loops, so I have to go <laughs> relearn, oh, I want to unroll this. So I look, here's lap zero, here's lap one. <laughs> Here's lap two. Do the ten steps. Here's lap three. Do the ten so, steps. So, 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 Danny, I, I see that you, you don't you don't do basic programming that much. <laughs> not not so much. I think that I, uh, I started with command line languages life. that if you there's no case or loops or any of <laughs> that stuff. You want to write it? Like, ga la la. Go to blah blah blah. Ga, go to. <laughs> Guys, mm -hmm. this is an autocross podcast, and you two sound like nerds. We're right geeking now. it out, so we know that who's <laughs> asleep now. I'm the one, I'm the wide awake one. <laughs> no, this is this is this is just, this is fantastic. Yeah, uh, some of the other oh. stuff that's really handy in here is they've got like a, a data compare template here, so you can kind of look at some of the other templates they've got available, and you can just start from here and build it up. So I've got my templates here. I'll pull in my first run and my third run. Pull in some data. I'm sorry. I'm laughing. Data. I'm still laughing. <laughs> like we're all nerds. <laughs> we love it's autocrossing. 
Yeah. Sorry. Okay, I'm back. I mean, only nerds loves autocross. I mean, I'm serious. Yeah, that's what, that, that was why I was laughing. I was like, you guys sound like nerds. <laughs> like, look at that. <laughs> We're all nerds. We're all nerds. We yeah. love racing in parking lots. <laughs> it's true. So, so can I tell you something? So yesterday, Mar- yesterday, oh. Marcus Pine uh, messaged me and said, "Hey, look, dude. You know, like in my slow BRZ, I was faster than your ND time over in Dominion, right? Then he sends me this like blurred out video of like nothing." <laughs> Like looking through the window, it's just all way. He says, "Look, I checked this video out. And we're gonna, can you build a comparison data?" So I actually did that, right? But I could use hmm. this now. Yeah. And so, so, so if we compare with my video versus just a white blank screen, <laughs> you got your your little marker up here in the top left, and then yeah, mm-hmm. nothing for for his video. Yeah, that's right. So, wow, this, this this is cool. Is this something that you, you build it, or was this a default, like a standard thing? From, yeah, this uh, is Race default Render. to Race Render. So you can take this and make it how you, however you want. So for the ones that I do, I wonder if I have something relatively recent that I did here. I know I did one early last year. Um, Maybe not. <laughs> well, we can go with uh, something completely crazy. So we did the, yeah. the test and tune from last year. So I went through, grabbed all of my different videos, stabilized all of them, grabbed all the data from everything, made individual laps for each, each one, rendered those, and then pulled them all together into this guy. <laughs> I can see. I'm glad. I want to see what's coming up. <laughs> oh my so, goodness. So I've got oh. each individual video along here. I've got my fastest run down here in the bottom. Oh right. my God. <laughs> uh, but everything is kind of overlaid on top of here so we can see how how far away they were from, from each one. And oh my God, did play, start please. there. I, need to see uh, I think it would be a lot better to play it directly uh, from the video that's already rendered. It doesn't really yeah, work. Yeah, no, well no, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From here. This is exciting. Come in here. <laughs> oh my! <God. laughs> no way! This is ridiculous. I love it. Oh my god! There. Oh. <laughs> so you can compare the, Look at the map. Right, the, Look at the map. Yellow is the one that's got the most right now. So up here, that's the guy who's ahead by a tenth or so. Right. You kind of see that in the lap. Purple's years. coming. Oh no! Purple's coming. coming. Purple got him. Oh! 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 Uh-oh. Yellow's but coming this back. This is pretty cool to see. All right. I was I was pretty consistent throughout all of this, but there are a few times where I did something that worked just a few tenths better than, than something else. Right. What happened to Yellow there at the end? He pulled the e-brake? I guess. I, I think oh, I what was just green? a few tenths off. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's only a couple tenths off. Wow. But I, but I tell you, I, I you know like I was all happy oh. about making like Brady Bunch videos. I used to put like nine videos of uh, <laughs> like everybody driving the same car and just let it fly by. Mm-hmm. That, I mean that, that, that this was that to shame. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> well, so the thing is, if I just post this video and just say, "Hey, people, go look at this," most people yeah. are just kind of say, "Ha, ah, that's funny," and then kind of move on. But yeah. this is this is actually helpful for me to see, all right, when I went through this and looked at each individual run, this is what I did better at this cone versus the, the previous run. So I kind of get, I kind of force myself to look at each individual, each individual run and see, hey, I actually did really improve on this run that was two seconds slower. Well, it's because I blew the corner over there and everything else about the run was, was actually super awesome. So you can actually learn a lot by going back through even more so than you know, just posting the videos. Yeah, uh, you can actually learn something yourself for how how you do things, even if it wasn't your fastest lap. Yeah, this is when it really started becoming honestly become beneficial because so many times that you look at this run and that run, you, you just figure that okay, I, did, I made a mistake in one spot, but but it could be in many different places that there are like tiny little changes and stuff. You know that that that's for sure. So, yeah, that's what I'm wow. definitely starting to see with especially the longer courses is, yeah, I might have been a tenth faster overall on my fastest run, but you know, I was two tenths slower in that corner and two tenths slower in that corner, but I made it all up in five tenths in this corner, and all of a sudden I, that was my fastest run. And if you put them all together, I would have been a second faster. So, Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No, this is、uh, this is definitely fantastic for post race analysis. So for 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 this particular, so just just for fun, for this particular rally,、really, uh, how long did it take you to create them? This one took a long time. This one took probably an entire weekend to to put everything together because it was probably thirty to forty five minutes per video here.、Right. Um, but once I had the data, I can just kind of synchronize everything together. So everything's already in a format where I know. It's it's good to go. I I just line everything up like you don't even see a, a start flag on this one down here at the bottom. So I've got everything lined up, ready to go, right on、uh, as it's starting.、Uh, so it's it's pretty easy to see once you have everything together. It all kind of lines up. Yeah.、Um, but race render even on on my、uh, pretty powerful computer from twenty you know, having. Data files plus twelve videos here. It takes a long time to crunch through all. Oh、that. yeah, it absolutely does. I I totally get it because when I made my pretty much video in my、uh, computer, I thought I have a pretty fast computer. It takes forever, and it crashes、yeah. <laughs> and a lot of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So definitely, definitely makes a, a bit of difference. So I, I would say before we wrap this up, you know, the the there's the the moral of the story is anything that looks amazing, there's a lot of hard work. A lot of hard work. That's that's behind there. There's there's no shortcut. You know, like I I've seen people says, hey, can you give us the tire pressure of or what tire to run in autocross, and then they assume that they automatically are going to win everything after that. It it's not that easy. <laughs> you know, every successful person I know in in just about any hobby doesn't matter if it's autocrossing or there's so much hard work behind it. You know, very 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 few times that you run to some natural. But even those naturals will probably start driving when they were three years old and forced by their parents. So, <laughs> so, so that 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 kind of tells you, that kind of tells you that, that nothing is easy and all requires hard work and diligence. And then、yep. this is awesome, Daniel. Exactly, exactly.、Yeah. And thank you again, Daniel, for your expert knowledge, man. I know you're probably tired of talking to us forever, but we are not going to let you go. Next episode, we'll wrap up our Daniel McFarland extravaganza with how to set everything up at the races with Race Chrono. I am sure we will. All be looking forward to it, and thank you again, Daniel. Thank you,、mm -hmm. thank you, Daniel. For our meeting a new autocross friend segment, we are happy to have Brandon Kiker join us today. Brandon is one of the funniest, friendliest, quickest guys you'll meet. He's also part of the Mid Atlantic Eight Six Club, and we're happy to have him here join us. Welcome. What's up, man? How are you? <laughs> I'm great. How you doing, brother? I'm a little worried about the quickest part. That's not. That's okay. Okay. He, quickest, and quickest to the antenna. Quickest to quickest to spinning. And, <laughs> and humblest. I forgot to add humblest. That's, it's awesome how humble. <laughs> All right. So Brandon, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? When did you get into autocrossing, and and who forced you to do it? Who forced me to do it? So Adam Crane probably forced me to do it, but it wasn't hard for him <laughs> to force me to do it. Adam Crane and I have been friends since college, and we both got cars at the same time, which. Very serendipitously, was ten years ago. I got my car April 2014, so it's been ten years one month. Wow! And my first autocross was ten years ago, May 2014. So you got this car and immediately drove it to an autocross. <laughs> I, I did the break in. You know, I did the break in a thousand miles. Went to my first car meet, which was the the like precursor to the Mid Atlantic Eight Six Club. And then Adam was like, "You got to do this thing called autocross." And I was like, "I want to drive. I want to race. I want to be a racer." And he took me to Capital Driving Club, and we went to Waldorf. And that's you know that's that's how it started. So Brandon, we've all heard about this Mid Atlantic Eight Six Club. I am not too sure all of our listeners know what that is, and why is it that when I'm at the track I hear about them, when I'm at an autocross I hear about them, I hear about this club all over the place. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so I'm very fortunate. I've become an admin of the club, so I was just a member, and over the years I became an admin. So MA Eighty Six, as we call it, is just the big FRS, BRZ, GR Eighty Six, GT Eighty Six. All those cars were the big club in D.C., Maryland, Virginia. It started as a Facebook group. I just went to a couple of meets. A lot of these guys are my friends. A lot of these people do autocross. You know, Marcus Pine is a lot of people know. That's how、um, I met Marcus through meets for the 86 group and Greg Pollock and Jen Fox when they had a BRZ. I met them. I know. I think Danny, you had a twin, but I don't know if I met you when you had a twin. But anyways, that's the club. I've kind of risen through the ranks. You know, just kind of organically,、yep. and、uh, yeah, now we're big. Now we have a website. Now we sell merch. We have T-shirts. Wow, love it. Yeah, so like now we're like official. Where? What's the URL of the website? www.midatlantic86club.com or ma86club.com. Very simple.、Awesome. So、anybody who's got a twin, they should go to the website. We're free.、So、love it.、Anything. Love it. So the first time I interacted with them was、uh, at a track day at Shenandoah. 
I rolled up and I was getting ready to go and they said the eight six boys are here and I was like what's that mean and they were like there's a whole army of them if they're coming up behind you give them the point by and I was like okay and that was the end of that I was like all right they're like if you see one of those twins give them the point by so yeah, that was eight, the eight six cup guys are super fast they're, they're, <laughs> oh yeah it was great they're super yeah. I don't do eight six cup I'm not that bad <laughs> but it was great it was great all right so a lot of people seem to know you not just from the club, but also from like just autocrosses and being around the community. Can you tell us why everyone likes you so much? Because I'm not a threat. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Because <laughs> I'm not going to ruin their day with FTD or anything like that. That's so right. still lose me. I've been around for a long time. I think one thing is that I'm known for bringing an easy up to a lot of events, or at least I used to. It's been a little harder these days to pack everything up. But and I drag a lot of novices to autocross. Ooh, I, I love think that. That's my. Thing is if I find somebody who's never done it, I'm like, oh my gosh, you have to come to autocross. So I, I drag a lot of auto novices, and I, I mean, I, I had two novices today, and I was riding with them, and it was a fun time. I love it. So without bringing in the novices and the new blood into the sport, the sport would die. So it's people like you that keep the things going, keep You're the welcome. clubs going. So thank you from everyone that loves autocross. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I think maybe you bring too many novices. But. Oh, no such thing. No <laughs> such thing. I love it. So, it's, it's fun to be king of the small pond than to be the, uh, the peasant in the big pond. <laughs> okay. <you> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Can't say what I'm about to say on the podcast, but you can read my mind right now. <laughs> All right, so what's next? What do you got planned for this year? Where are we gonna where will the people find you? So I'll be at almost every Mercedes Benz Club okay. across for for Greater Washington. And then this year I am back at the WDCR SCCA events. Um because I had to take off like the last two years for budget. You know, of course. Some of the SCS events are a little more expensive, but I'm just trying to get good at solo spec coop. There's a lot of competition in solo spec coop. So this year, just just trying to be as consistent as possible. Love it. Love it. And I, I will speak for everyone that sees you at these events. It's good to see you. And anyone, if you haven't met Brandon, run up to him, give him a big smile, shake his hand, give him a hug, do it all. I'm very mean in person. He's as, very as in, as cruel would be the right word. Cruel and and punishing. <laughs> very, extremely. Yeah. If I don't if I tell you to do terribly, that means I like you very much. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Brandon. Uh, we're hundred percent certain that you will continue to be that shining light in the darkness, the the white knight that we all need in our lives. And we're excited to check out that website that you mentioned earlier. Oh, the yeah, Six Club. Yeah. So, any twins, twin owners, please check out our website. Excellent. Love to see it. I want to give you guys a shout out because you guys, I think, are a huge part of the resurgence of how great autocross is now. Uh, you guys are doing the podcast is amazing. You guys help. You know, uh, Ada, I only really got to know you this year, and Danny's been supporting yep. me for years. But you guys are just bringing in people, really. So that, you guys do a lot with the podcast. God bless Thank you. you. That's all, Danny. Though I don't really want to do all that. All right, good. good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks again, and uh, keep bringing the novices. Keep bringing them we'll in. <laughs> all right. Talk to you soon. Back to you in the office, Danny. Thank you, Brandon. And this concludes our podcast episode. Everybody's excused except for the novices. Our novice meeting begins now. And for this novice meeting, we're going to talk about how to make friends and kiss babies at autocrosses. And then right now, I cannot find anybody more qualified than my co-host, Atata. Uh, about kissing babies. An expert hey, at yeah, kissing babies. <laughs> I love babies. Not in a weird way. Normal way. Nice way. Okay. Wow. And that's how we get the podcast canceled. <laughs> that's right. All right. Maybe maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do that when we both do the podcast. We say, Adam's going to be kissing all the babies. Drop and the babies off canceled. in our houses. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> that's right. No, that's weird. Yeah. No. Ada, Ada already I has just, uh, Ada has more than dude. enough babies and a dog. <laughs> People be dropping their kids off. I don't even know which ones are which. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. By the way, I do want to add this. So I am currently babysitting my older yep. daughter's dog from Boston, and we have our hands full just with one dog. And then she's he's like the best dog ever. So that's why that makes Ada the expert of handling three babies, the dog, and about fifty thousand friends. Party, literally. You've already been there, done that. You've raised all these kids. Like anyway, I'm a I'm a grumpy old fart. No more friends. Oh no more babies. All right, all add us. Okay. All right, so Ada, tell us how do you make? Okay, well, how let, do you make friends? Start, Danny has way more friends than I do, but it, I'm gonna do this novice. I'm gonna start 
talking, but everyone loves Danny. Everyone knows Danny from coast to coast. Yes, no. including like Canada, Canadians love uh -oh. Danny. All right, everyone loves Danny. I, I saw at nationals, there's some guys with Quebec tags, and they're like Danny, and I was like, yeah, uh, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> so, but the point, <laughs> I mean, it was no, just, kidding. just kidding. The point is though, it, it, why are we talking about friends at autocross, right, Danny? We're talking about friends because. Because that's what autocross is. That's, that's what, what autocross, autocross is. is. It's just yes. making friends. Thank you. Exactly. Autocross is great. We love racing around these cones. We love racing around. Oh, oh, you just out. froze. Getting back to it, it's autocross is a social sport. And it's what brings me back. And it's what brings a lot of people back. Sure, there are people there. And this is a good thing that they're just there to race. They're there to put their head down, run the fastest time. And that's what makes it fun for everyone, right? Because if we didn't have some fast friends who were just there focused on what they were wanted to do, it wouldn't be as fun if everyone was slow, right? So we need some fast guys who are just there to race. Great. But for me, I love the people there. That's why I go back. And if I had to say, you know, I like it way more than the racing, to be honest with you, Danny. I love the people. I love the talking and hanging out and high fives and having fun. It's what makes it... <clears throat> fun for me. And, and it's why I go back. So I want others like myself to experience that. And so that's why we're talking about making friends. How do you make friends? Well, it sounds really scary. It sounds really hard, but it's actually really easy. So we're going to break it down real quick. There's a few ways to make friends at autocross. It sounds so lame. The number one way is the people in your class. I'm serious. Just there's people in your class. Guess what? Those people have similar cars to you. They have similar mods to you. They have a similar mentality to you. Those people are your friends. They're your competitors. No, they're not. They're, they're dudes just like you who also are dreading going back to work on Monday. But guess what? It's Sunday. So we're out here having fun. We're out here having a blast. So the first thing I would say to do is get to know your competitors. Trust me, they're not mean. And they're also not angry. And they're also not jealous or intimidated they're literally you like we are each other we're all out there in a parking lot we're all nerds we're all having fun right so meet your competitors truly meet them like get to know them a little bit send them a facebook friend request right get their cell phone number become friends with them and 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 go from there so that's the first thing <clears throat> the second thing i would do and this is this is a little weird i would find faster drivers than yourself, right? You're we're in the novice meeting, so this is perfect for the novices. Find the faster driver and be nice. So so why not? So be so find the faster one. You, you, no, you, break you don't. Their legs no, first. you do not Nancy Kerrigan them. You don't Tanya Harding them or whatever. <laughs> you 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 just you're nice. You're not gonna bar barrage them with questions and just be nice, right? And being nice gets you so far in life. It really does. It it's gotten me out of so many like nonsensical situations. So like any, I won't even get into it, but like being nice has got me not shot. <laughs> so I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but like, I'm, I'm, I'm serious about this. Be nice to the faster guys because their knowledge and speed rubs off on us novices, right? Well, I, us not, I've still consider in some ways I'm still a novice, right? Like I've been doing it for years, but sometimes I still consider myself a novice because there's guys out there with so much knowledge and experience and wisdom and skills, right? Like that in comparison, I am a novice, right? Like, so it's all perspective. So someone might see me and be like, oh, he's not a novice. He's, he's hosting, co-hosting a podcast with Danny on the internet, right? He's, he's got, got the he, biggest wing. He's got he's such got a huge wing. wing. And those end plates aren't tiny either. They've got big end plates. Like, Danny, you're, the Miata wing has those small end plates. That doesn't make sense to me. But <laughs> I don't even no know why. Plates. They're like, Maybe. no friends. <laughs> I thought the first time I saw it, I thought you didn't put the Wait, on. hold on. So, that, <laughs> so does it mean that bigger the wing, yes, the more the friends? Bigger the wing, the more friends. I think that's, <laughs> I think so that's true. true. It's so true. That's right. <laughs> They got yeah. all those geeky guys with no wings. Exactly, and no exactly. So I wouldn't suggest bothering people. There's a fine line between being friendly and bothering that I have yet to figure out because I just bother the hell out of everyone. But if someone's out there walking course and they seem focused, they're looking at stuff, <laughs> they look at the cone, they're, they're turning around and, and looking at that and looking at that, maybe that's not the best time to run up to them and be like, I did, you didn't request, 
accept my friend request, right? Like that's not what I'm talking about either. And we're autocrossers, we're a little awkward sometimes. But maybe when someone's not focused on something and they're just standing around, maybe they're in between runs, like so the heat, like a down heat, and they're just watching the cars go by, go over and say hi, you know? So it and it does make the difference. And it doesn't just make the difference for you. It could make the difference for them. It could make someone's day, right? That's the whole point of this little mini driver's novice meeting. It's it's just make those connections and you will love this sport and you'll love anything that comes out of this sport, right? So it's not just the autocrossing. The friendships go outside of the autocrossing. They 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 permeate all parts of life and they make everything a lot better. So Danny tell them so if you see a stranger yeah. walking a course and then he's yeah. all serious business and then can you walk up to them and say hey look he just stepped on back <laughs> you walk up to him and pinch their butt and say gotcha <laughs> no don't don't actually i'm not uh, i'm not telling you to go and pinch strangers butts or whatever like that's don't do that don't do that. <laughs> yeah don't do that how about in a driver's meeting where you have no idea who the majority of those people are and go up and say, oh, who's going to start this fight? <laughs> that, was a, that was one time. That was one time. <laughs> yeah. That was the one time in Atlanta. He does that. <laughs> he did that. Yeah. He tried to do that in Birmingham, and I told him to stop because yeah, I don't we, want to get we, murdered. We need to relax when we're in Alabama <laughs> next time. That was not. <laughs> I know, man. You I know. That it. was the last podcast. <laughs> yeah. He tried to make too many friends in the yeah, wrong we, uh, we, it, was, it, was, it was okay in the end. It was okay. We, we survived. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. I, and I also, yeah, don't, don't so, in driver's meeting. I'm, le- I'm learning this. I'm, I w- interrupted this week, but I'm not going to interrupt any more driver's <laughs> meetings. He interrupted that every week. so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. got to stop that. So, so that's at a secret. So that's added a secret. He, he interrupts all the driver's meetings. And if he does that once, I guarantee you, everybody knows who he is. <laughs> it was the, it was the, yeah, right? it was I mean, JDM versus DTM. They had this like special event down in um, Atlanta. And I asked them I, like at the driver's meeting, I, I asked the question like, so how, how do we know who wins JDM versus DTM? Like, is there points? Like, how does this work? And they're like, it's an HPDE, relax. <laughs> So, but no joke, right? By no joke, he made a hundred friends <laughs> right then and there. And by lunchtime, people are, are are giving them free lunch. And by early afternoon, they are letting him drive their formula cars and say asking for Adam for formula car driving device. <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, I was like, oh my god, how does it happen? <laughs> so, so anyway, I would say, I would say, um, me, making friends or meeting friends at an autocross. I, you know, like if you deal with someone like Ada, let's say he's he's at the top of the food chain in, in, in those areas, right? And you can see that you can see that he can do he can make he can spend thirty seconds and make a hundred people know him right off the bat, right? So so that is a very very high skill of, of making friends, right? Now me on the other hand, I I'm actually fairly quiet at autocrosses, believe it or not. I usually only I talk a lot to the friends I already know. I don't really talk too much to the, to the people that I don't know, but it doesn't mean that I won't talk to anybody. So the thing is, I don't have added skills Everyone to meet a loves bunch of you. friends. Stop. Um, <laughs> yeah, but 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 I'll tell you, I think the important thing about this driver's meeting is everybody, when they go to the autocross for the first time, just like you go into any environment that you don't know or any hobby you don't know, you're going to be like, well, what do I do, right? I, I don't want to make it sound like that, but anytime you go to a new job or... Um, go into a new place or into a new restaurant is probably not that, right? Because right, they want right. you in. They know yeah, that yeah, they yeah. want you in, right? But when you go to autocross, you know what? It's just like going to a new restaurant, right? Maybe you don't know them, you, but they want you there. Otherwise, they wouldn't say, hey, want come and join there. us, right? Yep. So all of these places, yeah. So all of these places, people want you there. Otherwise, they would say, nope, sorry, <laughs> registration well, is full, right? <laughs> so, so once you're there, yeah. <laughs> once you're there, once you're there, you, you think about how how this really is, right? It's just like what Ada said. Everybody stayed there. People are spending their Saturday and Sunday to enjoy a particular event, right? There's no difference between that versus you go for the Boston yeah. Marathon, yeah. right? Or or a, uh, a Carson Coffee or whatever. Um, 
and then and, and, and people's uh, personality sort of just shines through, right? But one thing that's kind of interesting is is a lot of longtime autocrossers, they all have the, you know, like majority of the friends that I know, believe it or not, they're 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 all car people, right? Or they're like computer nerds. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right? They're into, into cars. They're, they're working on cars. They're into cars. They're engineers. They're computer guys and all that. So, of course, there's a whole bunch of other, you know, yeah. we can't generalize that. Like Greg, like Greg is a, you know, you know Greg is a different, you know, Greg Paul is, is in a different profession. Yeah, right? but it is still. So, so still everybody's still in a different it's profession. still software related. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the thing is, is, you know, if you, if you don't find people talking a lot, that, that's, that's. That's just that's just because that's you know a lot of ISTJ people in there, right? So so the key thing is is you know come in, have an open mind, you know if you're new, if somebody else is new, you know talk to somebody new, right? And talk to somebody that's been there a while, right? And then a conversation can be can strike very quickly, and before you know it, after the first event you get to know a few people, after the second event you get to know more people, and by you know by the middle of the year you know everybody, right? So, uh, or you can do what Adam does. You go in there and say, "Hey, who's gonna win?" <laughs> right? And then you know everybody. <laughs> so, that's another technique. But, but I think I, we want to use this opportunity to talk about novice meeting to talk about how to meet friends. Because after all, all novices, they're you know when you walk in there, like some people are very confident, right? Me, I I, I generally think that I'm pretty confident, but you know I am apprehensive going to somewhere brand new. So I don't want to kick the can and it yeah. takes the building down and they throw me out. But but the thing is, is you know, like none of us bite. There's a, there's a lot of information. There's a lot yeah. of nice people here. Um, so so by all means, at every club, if you experience something that's that's not that doesn't seem to be that friendly, right? Don't yep. give up, right? Because I mean, you know, some people can have a bad day. I remember I remember back when I first started, like. You know, 15 years ago, I, I would go to one organization and, and this guy, no kidding, right? He would yell at everybody at mm. tech. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm serious. Just berate you at tech, right? And then, and then, they come to think of it, he's my age, <laughs> right? He's an old fart like me. But he was just berating everybody at tech. But you know what? After, if you bypass him, the rest of the event is awesome, <laughs> yeah. right? So, so, so the thing is, is you know, and again, don't let one person's action yeah. change everything of what you see at, yeah. at the place, right? Because collectively, I think this this group of autocrossers are all, the, you know, a, a, a nice, knowledgeable, and eager to compete and friendly people. So, yeah, yeah definitely exactly. give it a shot. Yeah, we're lucky. We're lucky to live. So, here. Ada, we really are. We really are. Yeah, so. yeah. T- tons of clubs. You know, tons of different things. You know, to try, yeah. So, so this is a this is a really good opportunity. So, anything else, Ada, about making friends? That since I don't make, you don't, don't have, have any friends? friends. You don't have any. Don't really I don't have any. I, I don't. Well, I have. I I, I have like, like I have you because one, you go to one. them somewhere. Okay, first of all, that was delicious. <laughs> hey. No, no, and, and my and my and my friend Andy, right? And, Andy will okay, eat so shit with me two. all the time. So that's, you just lean two two people yeah. out of the. Yeah. My my wife is not even my friends because every time I want to eat stuff with her, she said no. <laughs> she said I'm, she's on a diet. <laughs> I I only treat my food oh buddies my as friends. I will say this: un, <laughs> everybody un, else, unrelated out. to autocross or podcasting or anything, right? You guys need to try dim sum. Everyone that's listening to this needs to go <laughs> figure it out. No, 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 no. You, you need to try. Oh, good there's bad because I only had good. Bad I've only had horrible. <laughs> no, no, no. But you know, I don't. I don't want to jump to shark or whatever. But I, I would say, I would say, maybe we should have a drivers' meeting on food Ooh, at some point. That sounds so good. Oh, like a not not a all novice across meeting. food on food. A novice this is meeting. Where you on go food. after you go to Summit like, Point. This like is where you go after you go to Waldorf. This is where you go after Bowie. Yeah, <gasps> I love it. Oh, that's right. That would that that would be a, that would be an episode. Maybe we'll do that next. That's a good <laughs> novice meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least it's not I mean, more no, interesting than it's making good, some right. Because, like, at the end of the day, you're tired, you're hungry, you don't know where you are. You're like in Waldorf. Where's Waldorf? Right? Like, you don't even know anything around yeah. you. Boom! Pull up the podcast. We'll probably have a couple of recommendations. Done. That's right. Korean barbecue next to you know across the street from. Spoil it! Chick-fil-A. Don't give out all our content already. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> all right. Okay. So with that said, that wrap up this episode of the DMV Autocross Podcast. 
and thank you for spending the last whatever the minutes and hours with us and we can hope you find it fun and informative and until next time keep those tires on that track and that wing in the back all right thank you so much okay so my personal favorite segments coming up because i like to sit back and listen to these answers they're not just fun to me they're also like There's a bit of entertainment in there, but there's also like that knowledge behind it because I want to know what Uncle Danny knows, right? So we are back to Ask Uncle Danny. And this week, thanks to our good friend, Dustin, and a lot of questions on the DMV Facebook group, DMV Autocross Facebook group about Pro Solo. So I'm going to ask Uncle Danny, can you tell us a little bit about Pro Solo and how you approach Pro Solo? Oh, Okay, so Pro Solo, believe it or not, was my first national event. And then my first Pro Solo, I only did an autocross like twice (laughs) before I got sent into Pro Solo. Oh my goodness. Right. So Pro Solo essentially is a uh, race within another race, (laughs) right? So so it's it's split down by their own indexes and then it's split down by the classes. The classes are slightly different than SCCA classes because you know, certain cars have certain advantages, you know, under pro solo conditions like launching and stuff like that. Right. So, so there are different classes with pro solo and then they have different, you know, you know, packs index and so on and so on. So essentially what happened is this, when you go to pro solo, first you get grouped into your class and then this is how they determine who the winners are. If you run the fastest time within your class, you're the winner of the class and the second fastest is the second fastest in the class. Right. And then, and then after that, that's, that's the first race. And then what they have is what they call challenges. And there are three different challenges. There's super challenge, there's ladies challenge and the bonus challenge, right? So what super challenge, if the, if the rules I went to are exactly the same is, is they usually select the 32 fastest people within, you know, the race, but the way that they select the 32 fastest people is this. Let's say there are 15 classes or 16 classes that has people. The winner of each class is automatically in the class. So they go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on, right? Mm-hmm. And then this is how they select the rest of the 16 people, which is really kind of weird. I mean, if you've never done this before, what they would do is they will find the next closest person to the winner mm-hmm. in that class. So for example, if Ad and I race, if we ran in uh, sport three, let's say, right? And then I ran a... 60 seconds and add around a 59.999 seconds, right? <laughs> so our delta is 0.001. That means that there's almost nobody that can be closer than me and Nada, mm-hmm. right? If that's the case, Ada would be the number would be number 17 selected in the list. Right. So it's the next closest. It's the next closest. So what's what's more controversial is is we can have <laughs> like eight really slow guys together, but we all but run very, really, very really close. Yeah. We all run the same time. Mm-hmm. And then you can have somebody say like super, super, super fast. And the next person who is like a second away, but it's also super, super fast. But faster than the other eight. Like, faster, way faster yeah, than the other eight. Yeah, way faster. Um, unfortunately, the other person, if they don't make the last 16, they don't. The, the ones that's closest together gets to make it. So what they would do is, is right at the end of the pro solo, they usually make an announcement and say, cutoff is 0.596 or something like that. Mm-hmm. That means that if you're, if you're within 0.596 of the winner of your class, you get selected to the challenge, right? So that's how they determine super challenges. Ladies challenge works the same way, right? It's yeah. just that well, there, if there are four ladies classes or five ladies classes, the top five goes there and the ladies class select eight. So if, if there are four ladies classes and the top four wins and then you just select the next closest to the winner mm-hmm. for the for the remaining four spots. Right? Got it. Bonus challenge is super simple. They just draw they out of out of the blue, they usually have something at, at tech or impound, you know, the, with a bucket that you can go out and fill out a raffle ticket, just throw your name in there. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's an honor system. Everybody can only throw their name in there once. And then at the end of the event, when they're giving out, you know, the the the, the class portion of the trophies, what at the end of that, at the end of the trophy presentation, the organizers will reach their hands in there and draw a names out. Mm. Actually, draw one name out, and then that person gets it and gets in the chat, gets in the bonus challenge, and that person draws the next name. Oh, fun! Yeah, 
I love then, that actually. And then they called another person on, and that person gets in, and then oh. they the next person draws a name. That's a blast. So you draw a names, yeah. And then if you are not there, then, then, you, then you're one. forfeited. They draw the next name. Yeah. So what bonus <laughs> bonus challenge is is the results of the bonus challenge is based on your own individual time. Okay. Right. So so let's say if everybody runs a forty seconds, but I ran at eighty seconds. Mm -hmm. Right. If my name gets drawn in the bonus challenge, that means that. If I run seventy five seconds, you you win. I win because I nobody's five, gonna be five, five seconds faster. Five seconds faster. Right, but <laughs> there's such a thing as called a breakout. So basically, you can only run your time and not better. Right, right. That goes that that applies to all the challenges. You can okay. only run your fastest time. You cannot run faster than your fastest time. Wow. If you run your fastest time, then what happens is, is your next time will be increased to whatever the fastest time you run plus another 50% of the delta of this penalty. Oh, that's huge. Yeah. That's a huge yeah. penalty. So, so, <laughs> so this sounds like more like drag racing than it does autocross. Yeah. 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 It's a combination of and the, yeah, yeah, that's wild. Yeah. I didn't so, realize that. So this is what the challenges are and this is how you score where it is. Mm -hmm. But I think we should talk about what the event actually looks like. Sure. Let's talk about okay. that. This yeah. is my favorite kind of autocrossing, if I'm honest right. with you, Dan. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun different. because yeah. you're actually doing a lot of stuff that you don't normally get to do, right? Yep. So so pro solo is a combination of autocross and drag racing. Mm -hmm. Right. So essentially what happens is, is when you do your pro solo runs, you there there every time you go to a pro solo, there is a left course and a right course. Or left course and left, I don't know which my hands are now. Right. <laughs> Um, so the course is supposed to be mirrored. So when you go out to the left, you go out to the right, you're supposed to be kind of fold them together as a sandwich mm -hmm. and they should be identical, right? But nothing's ever identical, right? And then in, in some courses case, like FedEx field, I mean, the very last pro solo that was held at FedEx field, it's like a completely different separate course because the lot elevation changes and the shapes yeah. and all that stuff is completely different. But what they would typically like to do is, is they typically find their, try like to find their big rectangle and then we'll have one course on one side going out a direction and come back and you have the other course going on this direction and come back. So the distance, all that stuff is the same. So you can actually see at each spot that's cool. who's leading and all that stuff coming yep. back. So that's the, that's the fun part of, of, of that. Right. So what you do is you run both courses, you have three sessions on Saturday, you have two sessions that you're running on Sunday, you have one session that you're running. So each set, each, each session, you get to take four runs. You get two runs on the left side. You get two runs on the right side, depending mm -hmm. on when you start. Mm -hmm. Right. So the key, so what they do scoring wise is, is they add up the fastest time on your left on the first session and fastest time on your right at first, uh, on the first session. And then you combine them together to come up with the total time and you compare those times. And then that's how you see where you are in the class. On the second session, if you run a faster time on the left side, you replace the fastest time on the left side. But if you didn't run a faster time on the right side, you can get, get to keep the fastest run on your right side. Then you add them together and that gives you another session. Always your it's, fastest time. That's right. And this is the reason why our dermatologist, Alan, after the first day, I mean, several times now that after the Saturday's event, he's always like really high up in the class, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But Sunday, if the weather didn't change, yeah. the conditions usually a bit better. Yeah. So everybody's used to the course, so that everybody just goes out and attack, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. Sunday, really, I mean, you, when you really do pro solos, after you do that for a while, Sunday morning is the is the go time, right? Mm -hmm. If the conditions yeah. are the same, if the weather condition changes and it's not good, then you go after whatever the session you have dried or the best conditions, you got to take advantage of those. Yeah, right. So essentially, you're running a total of six times on one side and six times on the other, right? There's all kinds of strategies. You can bomb away every run and see where it end up, mm -hmm. right? Where somebody goes in there and set a time that's like respectable and kind of work, you know, through it, right? I don't know what's right or what's wrong or right way or wrong way of doing it. I've done the like play safe kind of a thing that I was finished last, right? And I've done the bombs away every run and then I should yeah. did okay. So my 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 philosophy will be a hundred percent every run. Right. Danny, Danny, could you talk a little bit about the tree and the, the actual yeah. staging lights? It's the coolest, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, let's go over this. Most of the pro solos, they run in multiple groups. So there are four major groups. And then within the group, you have A and B. Right. 
or actually they just do one group one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight now. So what happened is, is in, what happened is group one always goes first. And after all the group one car goes, the group two car goes. And then usually group five and six are working while group one and two are running. Mm -hmm. And then three and four are running, then seven A are working. And then five and six are running, then one and two are working, you know, and so on. Yeah. Right. So all the cars are lined up straight, you know, like in a straight line. And sometimes you can have 30 cars lined up straight. So what they would do is, is they will pull two cars on each side and then pull them up, you know, together and they will pull the next two cars. Most of the time, they will post somewhere between six to eight cars up together, mm -hmm. uh, six to eight pairs together. So you're talking about 12 to 16 cars. Right? Not that many cars. Yeah, not that many. Because what happens is when the first car goes out, somewhere between in a the halfway, they will launch a second set of cars. And then when the first two cars finish, they send the third pair. And then when the second pair finished, they sent the fourth pair. And then you just kept on sending them in pairs. And then when people come back and left from their left run, they will cross over to the right side, right? And do their run. So they basically, it's like this. Yeah, it's so cool. Right? It's right? so like cool. A, like a butterfly. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a dance. It yeah, truly it looks really like a dance. A dance. Yeah. yeah. So so the, so the what, what happens is, is when, once you lined up, when you pull up, they will scan you, right? Once they scan you, you, you inch the car towards there, there's a line where you have you cannot cross. It's like the the pre-stage line, and then there's a car that's sitting at stage. So basically, what you do most of the time is is when the when the car leaves and goes stage, then you pull it up in the in the line prior to that, but don't pull it up too close. You give them some room, right? And then and then as soon as the car takes off in the front one, you can do a burnout to warm up your tires in that section where the pre-stage to the stage. Mm -hmm. So you can use, I mean, if you know how to really burn out, you can really burn the heck out of it. Right. Mm -hmm. But you also have to remember, you only have 15 seconds to go from the pre-stage line to the stage line and be staged. Right. So mm -hmm. you don't want to do a 14 second burnout. You will never yeah. be able to stage. You're not going to stage. Yeah. Right. Right. So it's usually like a two, three second burnout or real quick, like, ee! and then you go, right. Kind of a weak one. We call those autocrosser burnouts. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what you do is, is you, you, when you pull up to the stage, um, there is a big bread box look like thing, yeah. you know, on the left hand side, it has three lights. It's in the middle. Okay? Yeah. It's so, so it's really, so, so basically, you know, and the, th those are the lights that, that trip, that triggers you right to go mm -hmm. forward and out. So when you pull up, when you reach the first light, right, when you reach the first light, you will see, you will see one light comes up. Right. And then when you pull up to the actual staging light, you'll see both yellow lights comes up right at the top. So sick. Right. So if you only have one guy, one light that's flickering, that means that you're not properly staged mm -hmm. and you have to be properly staged when the time starts at, when the time countdown goes from 15 to zero, by the time it hits zero, you better be properly staged. Otherwise you can fail. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So this is what happens. You get 15 second countdown clock. You'll see a time on the bottom of the, the drag racing tree. And it will tell you 15, 14, you know, and so on and so on. When it hits zero, you'll hear this huge beep. It'll go beep, right? And that's the time that you want to go ahead and get ready. And then what happened is, is I, I worked at Pro Solo as a starter for many, many years, many, many, many times. Mm -hmm. So what happened is when it hits zero, this is what I do. I, in my mind, I go one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, go, boom. I do a three second count and I start, I start the clock. Right. Mm -hmm. When the clock starts, you have three yellows to the green. Right. So basically it will be yellow. Right. Mm -hmm. And then half a second later, yellow, yellow, half a second later, yellow, yellow. And then boom, you go. Right. So this is kind of how it works. When you take off, when you take off the car, there's another like several inches or a foot of space or maybe six inches to the actual light light that trips. Right. So your car will launch and move and then it will trigger the next set of lights. Right. That's inches away. Mm -hmm. And that's when the time your your time really gets calculated and it gets started. Mm -hmm. Right. So so the, so the key thing is, is when 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 you have the the clocks, the lights started coming down like each yellow. Right. Most people's reaction time is about maybe half a second. Right. Yeah. So the best time to launch it is as soon as you see the third light come up, mm -hmm. right? You take off 
and then you have a couple of two, three, four inches of the car movement that's not going to trip the starlight. Right. But if you take off too early, and you trip the light before the actually the green light actually comes on, red you light. really get a red light. Red light. Right? That means that your your time your your run is over. It's like a, it's like you went off course really before it right. even starts. Like it's exactly. Over. So it's a DNF, right? DNF, so you yeah. pronounce DNF. And then and then obviously and then of course if you don't do that, you if you time it right, if you waited too long, right? You go, okay, I'm gonna wait until the light comes on solid, not solid, but I'm gonna wait a little Green. bit after the, yeah. the 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 last yellow light comes up before mm -hmm. I go. And usually my experience is is as it comes as soon as you start seeing you let go, you can probably hit a perfect time pretty mm. close. But if it comes on and you hesitate it for like fraction of a second and go, then all of a sudden your time is not going to be nearly as good. Yeah. So the way that they calculate is, is um, the the perfect light is actually 500. I guess they use the, the use the, the time that starts with the last, you know, yellow light mm -hmm. before the green light. So the perfect time is the perfect light is not zero. The perfect light is 500. Yeah, point right, which five is zero zero. Because that's how they calculate when the green light comes up as you cross the beam, mm -hmm. right? So a great a great light for most people will be between five hundred to probably six hundred, right? Yeah. I, I would say a lot of seasoned autocrossers that they're pretty good, they're consistently in the five seventy five sixty range, right? Mm -hmm. And there are exceptional people that launches perfect a lot. Wow! Now we're talking about five ten, wow. five twenty. Or five thirty, somewhere around that range. Yeah, right. So it's extremely hard to hit a five hundred. I've seen a bunch of people hitting four ninety nines before, four ninety eights, and stuff like that. And I've seen people hitting one hundreds. Ah, that's cool. And also, I see people hitting two point three seconds. Ooh, baby, if you're hitting two point three seconds, you're waving bye to whoever's next to you because they're like, like if people are launching. Go, yeah, they go. What happened? And then I go right. They're, they're yeah. turning. They're t doing turn one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so then, so you have that fun at the launch. One of the things that I always try to remind myself is, is launch is just part of the process. Yeah. Because I know that after, you know, after I initially started doing, you know, a pro solo, I got so excited when I want to go to a line and go launch, right? And so a lot of times yeah. I would like look at the lights and then and try to do a perfect launch and I take off. I'm like, okay, 520. And I'm like, yeah. And I go, okay, what do I do now? Because you still got the part of autocrossing that you got to do. That's that's exactly what happened to me at MetLife last year. Yeah. All I did, all I did was focus on the light, and it all my runs were not good. They were all yeah. slow because I was trying to cut that perfect light, and that's it. It's fun. It's another yeah. game inside the game. Right, right, right. And then sometimes you know, like at the end, you know, you you get you get your uh, reaction time. They also give you your like. You do the reaction time. They also give you like the you know the sixty foot time and yes, you know and also stuff like fun. that. So also which fun. can so you can look at you know you can launch and then trip the lights at five hundred. But if your car sits on a line after that and it kept on spinning and not going anywhere or hit right. you know going up past the sixty feet or two hundred feet line, right. you know it means nothing, right? So so there are a lot of games that are being played in those type of things. You know, like even during practice on Friday, you have a lot of time to practice after between two o'clock, I think, to four o'clock. Right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. before the course is open, so you got like one to two hours of solid practice that you can practice launching. You know, like the the really like high level autocrossers that they're up at a certain point, like like you know the, your Stranos or whatever, they can sit there and watch your sixty foot time, and you can watch your two hundred time, knowing exactly how much power and how much stuff that your car's got. That's awesome, right? So yep. if they if they if one person shows up in one event and then in the same car that they're you know the two hundred foot time is like. I don't know, you know, I'm sorry, you know, like 60 foot time is like one point, one point nine or 2.0. Okay. And then all, and all of a sudden the following week that they came is like 1.6, 1.7. Wait a minute. Yeah. Then, you know, sums up. Wait right? a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so when you start introducing that element of uh, autocrossing, you know, with launches and stuff like that, you get, you get people that kind of look at your car and say, oh, well, there's another element of power that it's, it's abnormal or normal. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things within the Pro Solo that because you're introducing the launch, lots of stuff to look at. It's fun, man. Yeah, it's yeah. So it's much fun. Fun. And, it, and it's the coolest kind of autocross to watch. Yeah. I enjoy just it watching them because you get there's so much happening. It's four right. cars usually on course at the same time yeah. doing totally different stuff. 
as two other cars are doing burnouts, getting ready to stage. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's lot of incredible. lot of stuff. Yeah. So, like you know, for like for example, I was a, you know I was a, a starter for a long time, right? Yeah. So honestly, I have the best scene in the house. Oh yeah, you're in that the best trailer, in that trailer view. Yeah. And then, and then the funniest part is, is I have two guys over there, and one guy is a ten-time national champion, and the other, Aww. the other side is thirteen-time national champion. Ooh, baby. And I'm launching both of them. It's like, so, so cool. even though I'm not doing the driving, I said, mm -hmm. ah, I got you, suckers, man. I, I got can, you. I can do whatever I want. You listen to me now. I can count to four Mississippi. Throw everybody <laughs> off. <laughs> That's right. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, no. So it's just, it's really kind of cool. And then, and then also, you know, the pro solo timing can only take two pairs of cars on track. Right. Yeah, you can't. If I send a third pair, yeah. they're freaked out of the timing system. <laughs> right? So I've done that one like one time ago. You know, I was like, fall asleep and keep on launching people. Okay, uh, go. Let's go. Let's go. Go, go, go. go and then, go. Then, 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 of course, all of a sudden, my radio will come Timing's up. Timing's yelling say, at you. Hey, Danny, are you awake? Come on, what's going on? <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. Yeah. Or, you know, you think about on a bigger course, since you can only let send two pairs at a time. When you start a countdown, you have to kind of estimate what your countdown is. Right. But what happens? Somebody had a humongous spin right before the finish, and never you could stop it, right? Right. Then, yeah. of course, then what I would do is, is I will, I will pause the time. I stand up and I put my arms out and say manual launch. Mm. Right. So basically, I turn it automatically launch by the shot clock to me telling you, "Are you ready? Are yep. you ready?" Like. Okay, go. And you know, that's then. the sickest. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I haven't done this this go yet. Oh, but I can man. still operate it, you know, the uh, while holding um, the things the in hand. <laughs> right, but, but essentially, I'm the one that's controlling the pace. So, yep. so being a starter at a pro solo is a fantastic, you know, way to kind of so see cool. everything and check yep. everything out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, then, and then, you know, it's not not only you're you're working, you're controlling the tempo, and then you're actually watching the whole entire race mm -hmm. more closer than everybody else. So it's 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 a pretty awesome gig. The yeah. best. Yeah. yeah. So once you get on a course. It all depends on how the, the styles or people are. Like mm -hmm. a lot of times we go to New Jersey, we have a straight launch and we go into really, really high slalom fast. Yeah, so yeah, by yeah. the end of the slalom, you're hitting like 65 miles an hour. That's awesome. And then you go to a hard left hand and you start doing all that stuff. And then I've seen pro solos that where you take off and then within like, you know, 120 feet, now you got to make a sharp left hand turn and go do other stuff. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. that's a little less kind of excitement. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You want to go yeah. straight at least for enough that you get to watch the cars battling it out at the beginning right. like a drag race it's fun yeah 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 no it is it is so 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 then when you come back when you come back from one side you cross over the other side you know you got to remember you only get four runs and then and then between those runs when people come back and return to the other side that's where a lot of you know a bunch of cars will have their pandemonium period right oh my god you know like the car's not running well check my tire pressure do this mm -hmm. can you turn the shock up and blah 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 there's a lot of stuff so so that's the time when you have a buddy that do all that stuff for you you know, mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I've seen people that, you know, like the really popular guys are like national champions. Sometimes when they poke back in line, like three guys are over there yeah. changing their tire pressures and yeah. stuff, right? But my my philosophy is, is I used to do that when I had co-drivers and stuff like that. They say, oh, Danny, what you want your pressure to be? Yes. Yeah. And then and then in, in uh, 2000, uh, by 2018, I, I stopped all that. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't care. I'm just going to start off with a PSI or two PSI lower. And mm -hmm. I just run into whatever. Yep. And Little I focus build. on how do I, how do I launch and take advantage of the situation and go faster. So, so that's my pro solo thing. I, you know, on Fridays you can, you can do a lot of practicing, you can do a lot of practice launch. Mm -hmm. And then, and typically at 11 o'clock on Friday morning, there is a autocross to intro to pro solo kind of a, mm -hmm. yep. kind of a, a school or session that the Evo school offers. That's awesome. So I think you pay a few bucks and you go in there and then, then you get to practice like, you know, 20 launches or something like that. Wonderful. So, so that's a that's a good time to to kind of learn how to how to do things, especially yeah. if it's your first pro solo, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So it's it can be very intimidating. Um, you know, like I, you know, Adas, your first pro solo was when, like, after almost like 10, 12 years after you started autocrossing, right? I don't know. No, no, my first pro solo was right when I first started. Oh, ah, okay, and, okay. And I did not know what the hell I was doing. Oh. Like, yeah, I'm, my first pro solo was my third event of autocrossing. That's insane then, that it was your third event. Yeah, and then you know <laughs> I had a I had a Mitsubishi Evolution that I got it was like brand new, right? Mm. And by the end of pro solo, I need new clutch. Oh my god, it's so like, good! Every time when I launch, it's like oh huge smoke and yeah. burnouts and stuff yep. like that. And I come back and go, "What's that smell?" <laughs> oh my goodness! But yeah, I did go. I want to say like maybe almost a decade between pro solos because I 
you know, I, I didn't know what was happening. Like, I, yeah. And then I was like, yeah, let's go to Pro Solo. And it was so much fun. So much yeah, fun. I, I would say throughout my national running time, I started with the Pro Solo. And my last national event, except the the last nationals, was was a pro was solo. A pro solo, there you go. Yeah, I mean, I love it. it, it it's it's so great. That's yep. that's the most bang for your buck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're racing, and and then it, it's the it's really the coolest. It's the most for me. It's the most excitement. Even if if I'm racing, it's so because you're doing. Imagine doing a track, a course, and then thirty seconds later, doing a whole nother course flipped. It's yep. unbelievable. Like yeah. I can't. Yeah. It's one of those things you got to do it. That's right. Period. That's right. You got yeah, to do it. It's definitely a lot of fun. I thoroughly enjoy it. Yep. And then if you get a chance to try it, really should. You should. You should yep. make it, yep. make it a, yep. a, a priority in my mind. Like everyone should try a pro solo if they can. Right. That's right. But oh. I would say what's happening to Dustin doesn't happen. I've never known anybody that on their first pro solo and won the oh super challenge. God. That's almost insane. Uh. You got to remember. Every pro solo challenge doesn't matter where you go. Mm -hmm. You're going against, I would say, within the pro solo challenge group. There's at least 15 national champions. It's all, yeah, they're the best in, of the best in, of the best. Every pro yeah. solo, right? Yep. Because yep. because yep. everybody else loved it too. Yep. And then they got to be fast in order to get there. So, yep. so you, I mean, super challenge ha does have quite a bit of luck involved. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to pick the if you picked a pairing a pairing, and then then your your uh, the person that runs against you kept on red lighting, <laughs> right? Yeah. Or the person that the person that 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 on the first round is like super fast, but the other person is not as fast as the other person. But for some strange reason, that person gets knocked out. Yep. And then all of a sudden, you know, instead of going against a ten-time national champion, you could go against somebody that that's never been done this before. Right. I mean, you never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, so within pro solo, there's all kinds of you know, like even different kind of stuff that's going on. Where once you get into the challenges, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Right. Just don't give up. Yep. Keep on driving fast. Yep. <laughs> I did wear this shirt in honor of Dustin winning it, though. Do you know what this yeah. is? Oh, huh? That's a Honda. That's a Honda K series, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing the Pro Solo hat just to keep up with the Joneses. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Or I gotcha. kept up with the Grubs. The Grub. Mm. <laughs> this one, Slava. Slava actually bought me this shirt. Yeah. She bought me this K. So you gotta win Pro Solo next time, Ada. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. Uh, I I want to win the bonus challenge. Oh, okay. So let I'm gonna sign off this event with the bonus challenge story on my pro solo. Oh, I love it. Hit okay. Me. So so here's this is what happened. I want you know I've done pro solos many many times. You know like I suck. Never did any. You know never come to any. You know like I was yep. always dead last. Right. It's yep. always bad, 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 bad. Yeah, but fun. And then and then I then this this was my. I don't know, maybe the fifteenth pro solo that I've ever done, fifteenth nice. or sixteenth, which okay. is many, right? Yeah, it's a lot, and, but it's and, fun. And, yeah. and so I go, so I always complain, say I don't get anything, I don't get into pro solos, blah yeah. blah 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 blah. Right. Yeah. So that year I was driving with Adam George. I think it was two thousand twelve oh. or eleven. Oh, I was driving nice. his Mustang. Oh, like the silver right. one. I have, I have no idea how to drive a Mustang, and then and then I hit every cone on course, right? So my best time, mm -hmm. right? My best time on one side was four cones. Oh no. Yeah. Danny, the best time had four cones on the it. The best time on one side was four cones. No, Danny. No. Right? And I and I think that the rules say they haven't got before was is they, they at some point they changed the rules that they don't care if how many cones you hit, they take your fastest raw time without Okay. Cones. Okay. But, but at that time it's still the whatever the time it was. Yeah. Right. So so that means that I could potentially run eight seconds faster. Oh. Right? My God. And guess what? I got picked for the bonus challenge at the DC yes. Pro. Yes. So I was like, yes. Right? Oh, my goodness. Okay. So I was getting around my bonus challenge. I was really happy. And Adam was running around, you know, like helping me and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So then I see Sam Strando standing over there. Right? Okay. Yeah. They so walk up to Sam. I go, hey, Sam. So, yeah. Says, I got a question. He goes, okay. I said, I'm in a bonus challenge. He says, I know. Then I go, should I sandbag? <gasps> right? Yeah. Because I know that if I run too fast, I'm going to break out. And my breakout penalty is one times five, right? Yeah. One, one time, one, yeah. you know, basically 1.5, you know, yeah. X time of your time. Right. So then, so then he goes, he didn't know that my fastest time was like four cones. Right? Oh my God. Yeah. So he said to me, he goes, you, right? Yeah. Sandbag? What? 
right? Oh my just God. drive as fast as you can. Yeah. Right? I yeah. go, oh, are you sure? Are you sure that's a good strategy? He says, oh my God. You don't sandbag. You can't sandbag. Just do it. Just drive fast. Oh okay. If you don't drive fast, I'm going to kick your ass. I go, oh. Oh, okay. Right? So yeah, but back. if you drove fast, eight seconds of Delta, four. <laughs> so I, I broke out by 9.2 seconds. <laughs> Why didn't you do that during the actual runs that counted, Danny? So I mean, I, so I came back, right? After my first run coming oh, back, I was like, God. I was down by, I, I broke out by 9.5 seconds. So I was yeah. winning though. Right? Yeah. Yeah, because I was running fast. So yeah. because I'm leading the other guy by like eight seconds or something. But it's going right? to add you. Well, my 9.5 seconds breakout time doesn't add until the next pairing. Oh, no. Yeah. So I can beat the guy. Okay. Then, then of course, then they will calculate based on results and all that <sighs> stuff. And it goes to that. So anyway, so I came back. My now my breakout time is like with all the calculations now nine point five seconds. Oh my right? god! Faster, yeah. Right? Yes, so yes, so yes. instead of running like fifty seconds, now it's like forty point eight seconds. Oh my god! Now it's like national champion yeah. time or better. Okay, so I came back and then I won and then and then they say and so they announced the breakout. So then I then Sam walked up to me right. Yeah. He says, "What the hell are you doing?" Oh right? Yeah. I said. I said. I said, well, I, I mean, went fast. Like I, I broke out by 9.2 seconds. You yeah. told me to do that. Yeah. You told me to go fast, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so he says, so he says what, what, what was your base time? I said, my base time was on four cones. Oh, my God. Right? Then, then, then oh. Sam goes, why don't you sandbag? <laughs> and then he walked away. Oh, my. That is the best strato. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. He's great. All right. So I'm going to sign up with my pro solo story. With that, but anyway, um, I, I I won the pro solo super challenge, so so I I don't I don't think I don't think, um, you know I, I know there's a lot of luck involved, which is a lot of fun, but what Dustin did is extraordinary. Oh yeah, oh, right. Yeah. Yep. So I don't think that's ever happened before. So when you see him, just give him a pat on the back, oh, and where you know kind of you know give him a little tiny rub. Maybe you can you know win something after and, stealing his like like his chi. And I want to throw this out there, Logan. Logan, yeah, Dustin, know. and Danny, you three, three musketeers. Yeah. Unbelievable. Three blind mice. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're the three All right. best friends that anyone could ever have. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So we'll catch everybody next one. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Danny. Yeah.